Hello everybody, I am Dr. Sneha and welcome back to the Perio Hub. So today we'll be discussing something a little different but very pertinent in today's lives that is the COVID-19 disease and its effect it has on the future of dentists in the next few months. So let's get started. So there are about 1.5 million uh, types of viruses which are seen in the wildlife and we actually till date have no idea about these viruses. So when such a virus jumps from an animal, say a bat, a monkey, a cow or a pig and gets transmitted to the human, it is termed as a zoonotic virus. Now these viruses further cause amplification through human to human transmission and this further causes a global spread leading to a pandemic situation. Now if we talk about the coronavirus, it's termed as corona because of the presence of this crown-like projection or spikes which are seen on the surface of the virus. Now there are different types of coronaviruses which are present but right now what we are dealing with is a type of coronavirus termed as the SARS-CoV-2. So SARS-CoV-2 virus causes the disease termed as COVID-19 and why 19 is because the first case was reported in December 2019. Now if we talk about the modes of spreading of the coronavirus, it spreads through airborne droplets when we speak, when we sneeze, cough and it can also spread through surface contact. So the coronavirus can live on certain surfaces and when we touch these contaminated surfaces with our hand, and further touch the hand to our face, then we are likely to get this particular disease. So how do we tackle uh, such a pandemic situation? So one major way to tackle is through immunity. So when a particular virus infects individuals in a certain population, then certain individuals will die, but certain others will definitely survive and their immunity learns to recognize and fight off the virus. So they develop something called as the acquired immunity. Now in the third stage of the disease, when enough Enough number of people have acquired this immunity then the transmission of the disease is further prevented so this particular concept is termed as the herd immunity now if we have to wait for the coronavirus to acquire the herd immunity globally then we are looking at millions of people losing their life before we reach this particular stage so the second step is to develop the vaccine to boost the immunity now again it takes a lot of time to develop a particular vaccine to a disease so what globally we are doing right now is something which is quite old school. It developed almost seven centuries back during the Black Death where the concept of quarantine was introduced. Now quarantine or otherwise its simpler form which is social distancing is a practice where we try and avoid crowd or contact to other people so that the virus has fewer chances of transmission. Now taking an example of two states in US during the 1918 flu, state of St. Louis followed the concept of social distancing whereas the state of Philadelphia did not. So as you can see in this particular graph, there was a spike in the death rate in the state of Philadelphia compared to the state of St. Louis where the death rate or the death toll was quite less. So there was definite flattening of the curve in St. Louis which was seen compared to the spiking of the death rate in Philadelphia. Now with some countries uh, controlling the COVID-19, uh, countries like China and South Korea have opened up uh, their lockdown periods and certain other countries are planning to open it in a phased manner. So probably it is the best time to prepare ourselves for the upcoming challenges that we as dentists or dental students are going to come up with. So for convenience, uh, I have tried and put forward these considerations into three major categories. So firstly, these are the patient related uh, considerations, the operatory related considerations and ultimately the dentists or the dental staff related considerations. Now as dentists, we are apprehensive to go to our clinic and get back to our work. Similarly, even the patient is anxious to come to our clinic and get the treatment done. So firstly, what we have to do is to promote something called as digital consultation. Not every patient needs to come to the clinic or the operatory to get diagnosed. So digitally, we need to assess the chief complaint and to see whether it is really important 
for the patient to come to the dental office or whether the treatment can be postponed. Now questions regarding the medical history such as any history of fever, cough, shortness of breath, any travel history, such information has to be gathered through digital consultation first. Now the next thing we need to do is to prepare our patients to face the dentist and the dental office post COVID-19. Now there will be changes in the operatory area and the way the treatment will occur. So the patient has to be prepared so that when they enter into the dental office the next time, the levels of anxiousness is quite less. Now once the patient enters the dental office, thermal testing and vitals has to be assessed and detailed patient records and consent has to be taken. Coming on to the operatory considerations. Now in most cases, uh, the dental clinics or the operatory area is quite well maintained. But these standards have to even go higher post the COVID-19 situation. So the norm which is the social distancing has to be maintained even in the dental clinic. That is the distance between staffs and even between the staff and the patient. So the patient should be given prior appointments to prevent overcrowding of our reception area. They should be urged to bring lesser number of attenders with them. And when they are in the clinic, they have to maintain social distancing. The operatory area as such should be well ventilated. All the windows should be kept open and air conditioning systems should be avoided. Now constant disinfection should be the priority to prevent any kinds of formites and disinfection can be done using 70% alcohol or 0.5% hydrogen peroxide. Now all kinds of unnecessary items uh, such as brochures, newspapers, magazines, any kind of decorative items should be ditched to prevent repeated cleaning of those items. The next step is regular fumigation of our operatory areas and our clinic space and thorough sterilization of the instruments. The next step is to use barrier systems. So anywhere the patient comes in contact with the surface, those surfaces have to be safeguarded using barrier system. The dental chair should be equipped with high volume suctions and as far as possible, we should try and digitalize all our records. So digital record keeping and proper sterilization of our laptops and computers as well. Now the next step is the operator and the staff considerations which is one of the most tricky aspects uh, here in dentistry. Now as dentists we are not very used to wearing a personal protective equipment for doing any regular dental treatments. So we need to get used to wearing this personal protective equipment on a regular basis and also train our dental assistants and the front office staff. Now personal uh, protection equipment also called as PPE are of different types. So we have the basic kit which is mainly used by the housekeeping staffs and the administrative staffs. Then we have the medium kit which can be used for doing consultations or during OPD screenings and during procedures like taking x-rays. Uh, now if we talk about the advanced kit, this kind of kit has to be used while doing any dental procedure. Now for the first few weeks we should try and avoid the production of aerosols as much as possible but obviously if we are doing a procedure which involves the aerosols also we have to be equipped with the advanced personal protective equipment. Now if we talk about the process of wearing and removing this kind of equipment we first of all start with wearing our head cap then we have to wash our hands thoroughly uh, with the set protocol. Then the third step is the wearing of the gown. The next step is to wear the N95 masks. Now N95 masks are preferable as they can eliminate 95% of the foreign uh, agents. Then put on your goggles and ultimately wear your gloves. Now, now we should try and double the layer of gloves while performing a dental procedure. Now if we talk about removing uh, the PPE kit, we go in the opposite direction. Direction. So the first thing we do is to sterilize our hands uh, and remove the gloves. Then again we sterilize our hands and wear a sterile glove and with this sterile glove we then remove our gown, our glasses, our mask and our head cap. Then we remove this contaminated gloves and again wash our hands with the proper hand washing techniques. Now we have different types of clinics and operatory areas in different parts of the world. 
so it is very important to come up with our own protocol and our own steps when we enter our clinics and operatory areas now it is but obvious that we will not be prepared 100% for any given situation but what we can do right now is to prepare ourselves so that the situation does not overwhelm us we need to make sure that we are well equipped with knowledge and the information which is laid by the statutory bodies so i hope this video was helpful and informative and if it was then please subscribe to the channel perio hub and give this video a thumbs up so for now be safe uh, be sanitized and stay healthy and i'll be meeting you soon with my next video so till then perio hub signing off